So these principles of growth are very useful and they can be applied to positive growth, but also to negative growth. And the variables to which these principles apply are also quite considerable. Some obvious examples would include the population trends, stocks of businesses, or maybe stocks of natural resources for society. The rise in world population and the increase in average incomes throughout much of the world is fueling an increase in the demand for our limited scarce resources. How long is it going to be before these resources run out? Let's take oil as an example. Now this is controversial, but if we make some assumptions, then we can use our mathematics to make some estimates. The world's reserves are estimated at around 1150 billion barrels. Current production is around 28 billion barrels. But according to oil industry estimates, the annual increase in demand over recent years has been about 1.6%. That figure, of course, may alter. It may be that with rising incomes, that number will rise. On the other hand, it's possible that as oil prices rise, it encourages substitutes, and so that might limit the extent of the increase. So we can make any assumptions we like. But let's suppose that demand continues to rise by about 1.6% per year, and let's also assume that there are no significant stocks of oil yet to be discovered in the world, then what does our mathematics tell us is the amount of time we've got left before the oil runs out. Year one consumption is 28 billion barrels. But it's rising currently by 1.6% per annum. So in one year's time, it'll be 28 times 1.016. In two years' time, 28 times 1.016 squared, etc. So we've got n terms of a geometric series with a equals 28 and r equaling 1.016. So what we're looking for is to find when n the number of years worth of consumption uses up all the stocks that we have in the world that are known at the moment. Now the formula for that geometric series is given as a r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So here 28 is the current consumption. 28 is a 28 times 1.016 to the n minus 1 over 1.016 minus 1. 1.016 because the assumed growth rate is 1.6% per annum. That will need to equal 1750, the known world reserves. So that's what we've got to solve for. And the difficulty is that n is a power and it's also inside the brackets. So how are we going to find n? We need to get n onto the left hand side. To start with, let's multiply by 1.016 minus 1 and that will give us 28 times 1.016 to the n minus 1 equals 1750 times 1.016 minus 1. If we now divide through by 28 and add 1 to each side, we'll get 1.016 to the n minus 1 equals 1750 times 1.016 is coincidentally 28. So we've got 28 over 28 plus 1, which equals 2, of course. So we can now, with our rule of logs, say n log 1.016 
equals log of 2 or n equals log of 2 over log 1.016. This solves at 43.67. So, given the current stock level and the current trend rate of usage of oil, reserves will disappear in somewhere around 43 to 44 years time. We're making great assumptions here that the growth rate in the past will continue into the future, that we won't discover significant new stocks of oil. What you could do is if you think these are unrealistic assumptions, then you could vary the assumptions that we've been making, make up your own numbers, plug them in, and see what answers you get for yourself.